In this video, we are going to learn how to connect an Angular application and an ASP.NET Core Web API application. The idea is that from the Angular application, we are going to be able to make HTTP requests to our Web API. If you want to learn more about Angular and ASP.NET Core, buy my Udemy course today, where you will learn how to create a full application from scratch. But let's get to this tutorial. Alright, so as you can see, we are in this empty folder. And I will start by creating the Angular application. So shift right click. I already have Angular installed in my machine, so I can just create the application. So let me say open PowerShell window here to open a PowerShell window in this directory where I want to create my application. And I will say ng new my Angular app. Enter. And while this is being done, I will open Visual Studio to create my web API. All right, so here we have Visual Studio. Let me say create a new project. I will look for the template of web API. So let me say here web API. I will select this one. Next, I will select my current directory, which is this one. So let me copy this and paste this here. And I will put a name, my web API. Next, for this tutorial, we're going to be using .NET 9 and we're also going to be using controllers. So let me say create. And while this is being done, let me come to my terminal because I need to select the style sheet format. I want to use CSS, enter. I don't want to use SSR, so let me say no. And this is going to start creating the application. So while this is being done, let me drag this over here and let's get started. So in order to be able to receive a HTTP request from my Angular application, I need to configure my application to use cores. Course is basically a security mechanism that doesn't allow any origin to be able to make HTTP requests to our application. The idea is that we must indicate from which URLs we are going to be receiving HTTP requests. In our case, we are going to put localhost 4200, which is the default URL for an Angular application. So let's do that. Let's come here to the Solution Explorer. Let's come to the Program class. And let's come here and let me say the following. I will do this before the bar app, before this bar app, because here we can configure the services. So let me say builder services at course options, options. I will add a default policy, policy. And in here I will put that policy. I will say policy dot with origins. And in this with origins, I can pass the URLs that I want to allow to make HTTP request to our application. So I will do that in just a moment. Let me say allow any header because we want to allow any kind of HTTP header and also allow any method that is for, for example, HTTP get, post, put, delete, patch, etc. So semicolon here. All right. And let me put a semicolon here. Now I don't want to hard code here the URL of my Angular application because, for example, in production, we may have another URL or we will have another URL. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use a configuration provider. So we're going to come to the Solution Explorer and let's come to the App Settings Development JSON. This allows me to have the URLs and other configuration data not hard-coded in our application so that we can change it depending on the environment in which we're in. So let's come here and here almost at the end, I will say comma allowed origins semicolon and here I will put my URL which we're going to get from our Angular application. I will show you that in just a moment. Let me for now let's just come here to the program class and here above this course I want to say bar allowed origins builder configuration get value a string and let me put here the key. Let me put this key here and then let me not forget to say a split by comma because I want to be able to have here several URLs just in case I have several applications. For example, I can have URL one, URL two, URL three and so on. So although in our case, we're only going to have one, I want to have that possibility here. So a split by comma. All right. And then I can pass here allowed origins. All right. So now let's come to Angular. Let me come here. Let me come to this directory to the city my Angular app code dot to open this project using Visual Studio Code. Of course, you can use whatever text editor you want to use. But in my case, I prefer to use Visual Studio Code for front end development. All right. So here we are. Let me say control back tick or just come here to terminal new terminal because I want to run my application because I want to get the URL so that we can put it on the 
Web API. So ng serve dash o. ng serve dash o basically allows us to run our Angular application and automatically open my default browser with the application on. All right, I will say no. Awesome, we have our Angular application here. So let me copy this URL. Let's come back to Visual Studio Code and let's come here and let me paste this here. I like to remove the last slash. So this is done. This will pick up that URL. And after this, let's come down here because we have to configure a middleware. So let me come here and I can do that here. App use course. All right, so now I can press Control F5 to run my application because now I want to get the URL for the Web API and put that into my Angular application. All right, so here we are. Let me get this URL from here and let's come to Visual Studio Code because I want to use a file that will allow me to have one URL in production and another URL in a development environment. So in Angular, we do this by using environments. So let me create a new terminal. I can click here. And this will allow me to have two terminals. I have here the application running and here I have where I can write commands. So let me say here ng generate environments. All right. And as you can see, this created two files, but also it modified the Angular JSON file, which means that in order for these changes to take effect into our application, we have to stop it and run it. But we're going to do that in just a minute. For now, let me come to the environment development file. And as you may imagine, this one is for the development environment. So let me minimize this. And let me say here, API URL. Here I can put the URL of my web API. I like to remove this from here. And also let me do the same for production. But in production, instead of putting this URL, I will just put something like XXX or dot 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 or whatever. But something that is obvious, that is not ready yet. So let me put this here. And now, as I was saying, let me come here. Let me come here to this terminal and let me stop running my application and let me run it one more time. So now while this is done, what I want to do is that I want to create a service that will allow us to communicate with our web API. The idea of a service in Angular is that it is a class that is reusable throughout the whole application so that we don't have the implementation detail of communicating with our web API in a component, but we have that abstracted into its own class. So let's do that. As you can see here, by the way, as you can see here, we have this default service that we can consume from our web API. And that is what we're going to do. So let's come here and let me create a forecast service. Let me say here ng generate service weather forecast. The weather forecast controller is a default controller that gets created in a new web API. So this has been created. So let me come here. And inside of this class, I can use the ICTP client from Angular. But before using it, we have to configure. So let me come here to app config. Let's come to the app config file because here I have to say provide HTTP client, which will allow us to use the HTTP client throughout the whole application. And I will use here with fetch just in case we want to use SSR in the future, because as you can see here, as you can see here in this documentation, it is recommended to use fetch in the case where we use server-side rendering. So I just prefer to use fetch from the get-go. All right, so we have the HTTP client available to us. So now let's come back to our weather forecast service. And let me say here, private HTTP equal to inject. We're going to inject an instance of the HTTP client. And after that, we're also going to inject the web API URL. So let me say here, private API URL equal to environment. API URL and I will say I like to say here the full URL of my controller. So let me say here. Let me copy it from here just so that I don't make a silly mistake. Let me say weather forecast and now let me create a public get method It's not going to accept any parameters and I will return an observable. It can be of any and here and I will say here return HTTP get and I will say here API URL. All right, so now we have this. So now let's come to the app component. The app component is this UI that we're displaying here. I want to delete this and I want just to put this content that we have here, but here in our Angular application so that we can see that everything is working. So let me come to the app component. Let's see that if I remove this whole HTML that we have here and I say H2, testing the communication between Angular and Inspiro.net Core, let me save everything and let's come here. And let's see that indeed we have that here. So now let's use our service. 
Let me come to the class of this component, app component TS, and I want to inject my weather service. So let me say here, weather forecast service equal to inject. Let me say weather forecast service. And I can use a constructor so that when we instantiate this class, we're going to fire up our service. We're going to say this weather forecast service dot get subscribe. We can use the following. We're going to say weather forecast. That's what we're going to get back from our web API. And I will just put that here, weather forecast with type any array equal to an empty array. In the future, we're going to learn to use something called signals in Angular, which is more modern, but I want to keep things simple for this video. So let me just say here, this weather forecast equal to weather forecast. So what I'm doing here is that I am getting here a response from my web API and I am assigning that value into a property here of this class so that we can have access to this property from our HTML. So let's come to the HTML part and I will use a at four. So we'll say weather forecast of weather forecast. And in here I will say div, here I will say div, and I will say date, weather forecast, weather forecast date, temperature in Celsius weather forecast temperature in C. And by the way, this comes from, this comes from these properties that we have here. So I will just put summary in the end. So let's come here and let me say div summary. And finally, let me put here an HR just to have a division. So let me save. Let's come back to Google Chrome. And as you can see, we have here the same data that we have here in our web API, but now in our Angular application. So as you can see, we're able to establish a communication channel between our web API and our Angular application. If you want to learn more about building applications with Angular and Xperia.net Core, buy my Udemy course today. You can find a discount in the description of this video. Thank you.